then chitta anupassi chitta means mind try to find out what are the wholesome unwholesome mental attitude that you have in your mind your egoism does not allow it. you to think i have ignorance i have what do you call anger or hatred pretend that you are not having these weaknesses but we had to accept yes i know i am hot tempered and then you get the chance to concentrate on that to reduce and reduce and reduce and reduce and to tame the mind that is meditation no religious label for this anyone who got a mind can do this you understand the nature of your own mind what are the good qualities in your mind by nature kindness sympathy honesty patience tolerance these good qualities are also there in your mind then try to cultivate all the good qualities concentrate on them development of the mind taming the mind that is called meditation we have completed three item last one is dhamma anupassi dhamma gives many meaning teachings of the buddha is also called dhamma universal law or natural phenomena also called dharma and then we had to concentrate on the nature of natural phenomena universal law not created by anybody the world exist because of these natural phenomena or universal law but we create our own imagination not knowing what they are things come into existence how they exist due to combinations of elements and energies start from molecules from the very beginning then go on developing and developing and developing and developing and later an object come into existence but this is impermanent this never remain forever without changing without decaying and disintegration whether it is life or planet or any other object anything that which exist in this universe all are impermanent they exist for a long period but while existing going on changing 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 after changing changing decaying 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 after decaying disintegrate dissolved <coughs> element turn into element energies turn into energies that object disappears now let us take this earth this is an object do you think this is permanent do you think this remain forever 
No. The sun and the moon and the galaxies or universes, anything that which exists, everything is going on changing, changing, decaying and disappearing. Now this is the universal law. But many people believe this is created by the God. That is their concept. But this is natural. There's nobody behind to handle this. That is called universal law. Universal law is not created by another person. Then we come to know what this world is what this universe are, so many universes, not only one, then we realize the real nature of existence. Now this earth, while we are li which we are living on, divided into four periods, according to the Buddha. Sangvartha, Sangvartha sthai, vivartha, vivartha sthai, four period. Existing period. Now this is existing. We are living. We think this is permanent, forever. No, we are wrong. While existing, it is going on changing, 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 changing without our knowledge. Not noticeable. It may take so many thousands or millions of years for us to understand the changes, how changes have taken place. After that, start to decay. Going on decaying, 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 decaying. Why? that component things combine together as a bundle with the earth or planet or life or plant or hill or rocks, anything. The binding factors, energies, started to loosen, loosening, loosening, loosening. Then later all the element separate energy is separate. It is natural. Uh, four stages just now I mentioned. Existing period, changing period, decaying period, and disintegration. Disappear. After that, when this question was put to the Buddha, what is the origin of this world? What is the origin of this life? The Buddha said, it is impossible for anyone to find out the beginning of this world or the beginning of this life. Because of this. Now, after ending this existing world, completely disappear. But dispersed particles, molecules, atom, neutron, proton, electron, gravity, gas, magnet, all these energies no one can destroy, remain. These are energies. Again, these energies slowly, 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 due to gravity and magnet, combine. Molecules. Then the formation started to take. Ah, that is why the Buddha says there is neither beginning nor end. I remember Burton Russell, one of the best intellectual free thinkers in England. He said, 
in his book. Amongst the founders of all those religions, I respect only one man. He is the Buddha. Although he was not a Buddhist, he has no religion. Why do I respect the Buddha? The Buddha is the only religious teacher who never made false statements about the beginning or the origin of this world. Because he knew what this world is. But all the others said, this world was started ten such and such time, created by so and so. It shows how poor their understanding capacity. The Buddha knew what this world is. Therefore, he said there is neither beginning nor end. Beginning become the end, end become the beginning, come joined together again. Now, setting sun here in this country today become rising sun in another country. So setting sun is not the ending of the sun, reappear again. So everything that which exists, change, decay, disappear, again, energy is combined together, formation takes place. Uh, that is the four method introduced by the Buddha for us to concentrate. When understanding appears in our mind, our mind will be free from all the weaknesses and defilements and evil forces, sufferings, complete liberation, salvation, deliverance, final goal. We gain when our mind be developed up to that extent. Uh, this is the nature of the mind. Without using our mind, we cannot gain salvation from another person. Buddha says, Tumhehi kichang atapang akhataro tathagata. The Buddha can tell you what to do and what not to do for you to find out your salvation. I cannot give this salvation to you. You have to work for that. But Buddha can tell how to do that. So we cannot expect our salvation from another person by worshipping or praying or offering or doing anything. We have to work for that. Although they believe that they can get from either God or from any other person, but they had to work for that. Simply they never gain their salvation. So from the Buddhist point of view, it is very clear, we never gain our final salvation from another person. We had to work by following the correct method given by the religious teacher. What is the time now? Nine. Pardon? Still can carry on. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> Why not we have discussion, because there are many things to discuss, because we are not here to argue or to fight or attack or criticize or condemn, but to know something, to understand something, how far we can get together, work together, and how far we can develop our good attitude, how far we can reduce our weaknesses, this is the main purpose. 
Thank you, Chief Reverend. Although the Chief Reverend said that the mind is asexual, uh, the committee, organizing committee will not be responsible if the male use a female toilet. Uh. Please bear in mind. <laughs> we are still in this world. Anyway, I open the floor now for questioning. Please use the mic for the benefit of those who are present here so that we can hear the question. All right, Reverend. Just one uh, piece of advice we would like to get from you. That is, we realize and we can observe there's so much of destruction of the world going on simply due to man's selfishness and greed. He doesn't know what actually keeps him alive. What he needs to survive, he has forgotten. What he knows what needs what he needs to keep his greed and selfishness going. What is your advice to the environmental destruction of the world? Thank you, right, Reverend. Only advice that I can give from the Buddhist point of view, they behave or they do all those things by misusing their Craving, selfishness, jealousy, hatred because of their ignorance. Ignorance is the main cause. If there is no ignorance, they never misuse those things to, to disturb or for destructive purpose. Therefore, all these troubles start from ignorance. That is why it is necessary for us to know, to understand. Uh, just now I explained the four items recommended by the Buddha for us to know. When we understood, then we can reduce so many misconceptions, bad ideas, cruelty, jealousy, anger, through this understanding. Therefore, by force, no one can stop. The more we use force, the more they aggravate the situation. The other day, I mentioned United Nations Constitution. They have drafted in the United Nations Constitution War begins in the human mind. At the same time, peace also must come from the human mind. We can pray, we can worship, we can burn a lot of papers and joysticks <laughs> asking peace to come down. It never come down from anywhere. It must come from the human mind. They are repeating what the Buddha has said. In Dhammapada, the first sayings of the Buddha, he said, Mano Pubbangama Dhamma. Very simple saying. Mano, Mano means mind. Mano Pubbangama Dhamma. Human mind is responsible for all those good and bad things that which exist in this world. Not the animals or ghosts or devil or God, but human mind. Human mind create violence and bloodshed as well as peace. Nobody else can do that. To reduce this, we must develop our understanding by reducing our ignorance. We have more ignorance in our mind. Understanding is very little. Just like huge iceberg in the sea. We can see only a little bit on the top. 
iceberg is under the water, we cannot see. Our ignorance is so big in our mind. We use, we can understand only a little bit. Uh, that is why we are facing all these unfortunate incidents, occurrences to suffer. Next question. Chief Reverend, um, uh, some religions seem to have a problem of accepting certain scientific theories like the Big Bang and uh, evolution that we come from monkeys. Uh, do Buddhism have this problem accepting these scientific theories? Question number two. Um, about meditation, I have heard other Buddhist monks who say that, you know, to meditate, we must clear the mind, clear the mind. They even give a formula, clear mind, clear mind, breathe in, don't know, breathe out. But just now, when you were talking about meditation, you seem to uh, insist on uh, focusing on object, either it's a pain or the body or the, or the good feeling or, or something. So uh, how do you reconcile the two? Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> If the mind is clear, no need to meditate. <laughs> what for? <laughs> so simple. And the, uh, the first question is very controversial. What scientists have discovered was against certain religious concept and belief that they have been maintaining for a long period. Albert Einstein, that day also I mentioned, science without religion is blind. Because scientific knowledge, they can misuse and abuse to destroy the whole world. It is ready now because no religion to guide them, not to abuse that scientific knowledge. Again, he says, religion without science is lame or crippled. Uh, what is happening? Scientific discoveries try to topple the religious belief that they maintain for a long period. Religion or religious belief they maintain not through experiment in a laboratory, <laughs> through their belief. Religion started with their belief. So what they believe according to their way of thinking at that time, recorded, accepted as truth. But scientists could not satisfy without depending on God, without depending on religion, by using their independent intelligence. They discovered so many things that people have never heard, never thought. H.G. Wells, I think many of you know, well-known world historian, he says, according to our holy books, this world was created only few thousand years ago. 
as Jeevan says. But when you study geology, we can understand it has taken millions of years for this earth to cool down, settle down, for life to come into existence. Therefore, how can we accept what is written in our holy books? Uh, these are the problems they had to face because of scientific discovery. 1998, Pope John announced there was a big article in the State Times, very clearly mentioned. Human beings were not created by the God. They come into existence due to gradual development of evolution. Pope John. I discussed this matter with the Archbishop, Sota Fernandes. Why Pope says like this? Then he said, actually his idea is, this body is not created by the God. He creates only soul. Uh, that is why he says, this human life is not created by the God. But when you refer to Albert Einstein, religion without science is lame, crippled, not practical at all. Now they try to compromise, accept certain discoveries created by the scientists. Uh, then religion become active. Therefore, we should not depend on our belief, what they have maintained for a long time. When you read certain Buddhist book, we can see certain stories, certain incidents, but when you compare with the modern education, cannot accept. At that time, the way how they believe. Now take for instance, when the rainbow appears, when I was a small boy, I can remember, my parents told me, do you know what is that? That is the vessel dropped by the God to take water from here. Uh, then the rain comes. All our belief about this worldly condition was exactly like that. And some of these beliefs incorporated into religions, every religion. Buddhism was also not free from that. Every religion. Therefore, we had to use our common sense, sense of reasoning, understanding, to say, no, 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 it is in our religion, we cannot, we cannot throw away. That is not the way. What people have believed few thousand years ago about the life and the world entirely changed today, different, according to the modern education. Therefore, instead of criticizing, condemning religious belief, we must try to understand with good intention they have introduced this belief. But today when we analyze, we can understand some are not easy to prove that they are true. Therefore, we must know how to adjust in any religion. Thank you. Next question. Venerable sir. On the question of rebirth, what is rebirth? And does rebirth confine only to certain religious teachings? There are three words. Three, three means 
reincarnation, transmigration, and rebirth. Transmigration used by Hindu, and today Tibetans also use that word, transmigration. Sorry, not transmigration, reincarnation. Reincarnation. Transmigration means the soul migrate from life to life, if not straight away, either heaven or hell. Uh, that is called transmigration. Buddhism does not use these two words used only rebirth. That is also not correct. The word used by the Buddha in his first sermon, Dhamma Chakra Sutra, he said, Nati Dani Punabhav. Punabhav. Becoming again. Ah, that is the word used by the Buddha. No more, we use the word rebirth. That means becoming again. Why become again? People say, why? We cannot understand. Today, religion is not important to understand that becoming again is true. No need to depend on any religion. How many people have remembered their previous birth, explain everything in details? Many people have come from America, Germany, England, having heard, investigated, found out correct what they have said. But that memory remains only one or two years' time, after that completely disappears. Just now I mentioned, in our storehouse of consciousness, all our memories are there. Uh, that memory suddenly appears. Again, when we hypnotize a person, there are many cases, they have explained their previous birth, all the details, and spoke a language that this person never learned within this lifetime. There are many cases in Australia and some other countries. Are these Two things are more than enough for us to understand that whether we believe or not, belief is not important. Things never take place in this world according to our belief. Birth is natural, sicknesses are natural, old age is natural, death is natural, no need to believe. If anything happened to us after our death, that is also natural. Not according to the God or Buddha or Bodhisattvas or anybody. They are not responsible for that. They cannot create that, they can stop that. Only our mind, our consciousness is responsible for that. Just now I mentioned Consciousness, I did not explain. What are the five kinds of mental energies maintain, that we maintain in our consciousness? Avidya, trisna, karma, upadana, bhava. We do not know. We take only consciousness. First, 
avidya, ignorant, just now I mentioned. We have more ignorance in our consciousness. Ignorance misleads us, persuades us to create more bad things than good things. It is in our consciousness. Then we have craving, three kinds of craving. Kamatanha, Bhavatanha, Vibhavatanha. Craving for existence. We can destroy thousands of others for my living or our living. Our craving is so grave, so strong in our mind. By destroying all the others, I want to live. Craving for rebirth, craving for eternal life, always in our mind. Then, tanha, karma. We cannot live without creating either good karma or bad karma. Karma is not belong to any religion. Natural occurrences, wholesome, unwholesome, by nature, not created by the man or religious teachers. By thinking, by talking, by doing certain things, we create good karma and bad karma. Whether we have religion or not, or whatever religion that we maintain, this is natural. When we develop hatred, anger, jealousy, grudge and ill will in our mind, we create bad karma. When we develop sympathy, compassion, kindness, and honesty in our mind, we create good karma. When you call others to abuse, insult, and what do you call uh, condemn, we create bad karma. When you talk to others to console when they are suffering from fear and worries and all sicknesses and all these problems, we talk to them kindly, very nicely to console them. We create good karma. We do certain things for our pleasure or for our living. Certain things are moral, certain things are immoral. Certain things are good, certain things are bad. Everybody is responsible for them. This is in our consciousness. The other one is upadana attachment. All of us have some sort of attachment towards somebody or something. There is nobody who lives in this world who has no attachment. Last one is karma formation. Karma formation means when we are going to die, senses are not working with the mind. We cannot think purposely, stop everything. Uh, that is the time that subconscious mind projects all our good karma, bad karma, neutral karmas appear, disappear, appear, disappear, just like a film show in the mind. Before our death, the last karmic thought that appeared in the mind take the responsibility for the next existence. Uh, that is called karma bhava. Uh, these five energies are working in that consciousness. 
So when this consciousness transmitted from here, just now I mentioned, it must enter into a mother's womb. May be testive also a mother's womb. Whether humans or animals or any other, according to karmic energy. Our rebirth take place in this way. Not created by anybody. Our own mental ingredients we maintain as consciousness. Thank you. Next question. Chief Reverend, can I pose a question to you? <laughs> you are going to post. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, my question is, uh, there are quite a number of us who are meditators. Is there any com uh, way you can share with us how we are told meditation is a long task, I mean, uh, it's a tedious and long path to walk. So very often this thing pops up in the mind. Uh, are we progressing, you know, or are we retrogressing? Can you shed some light on, on this? How, to, how does a meditator know by himself whether he's moving ahead or... Stagnant or retrogressing? Thank you. When a person is suffering from a sickness, he takes some medicine. While taking medicine, he can understand whether his sickness is reducing or increasing. <laughs> What is the first one? Okay, my first question is, what is the purpose of life? Oh, that's right. And uh, my second question... Wait. Okay. Paratha chariyaya satang hi jivana In Sanskrit language, the purpose of our life is to do some service to others. Without serving others, we cannot serve ourselves. No, that is the purpose of our life. Now, what is the second one? My second question is, how could religions in this world play a more significant role towards promoting world peace and avoiding conflicts uh, in between uh, religions and uh, communities of uh, different uh, ethnic backgrounds. In my talk, I have mentioned religion is to train human mind not to create violence or disturbances or destruction, but that corrupted human mind misuse religion for their own benefit to gain more worldly power or political power or material things. So, no one can do anything to promote peace or what you call uh, uh, happiness if we do not change our mind. It never come down from heaven, it never come down from anywhere else, it must come from our mind. If the mind is corrupted, selfish, no one can do anything, they are misusing religion. Religion is a very big business now. Actually, they are not practicing religion. They use religion either for gain more political power, more authority, or more material gain, or manpower. They use religion only for that purpose. But they do not want to practice any religion. They use the name of religion to gain many of these things. See, how we use our mind, 
how unreliable we are. So, what is the second, third one? <laughs> should should a religion get involved in politics and uh, to take stand on certain uh, issues, uh, especially? Yes, in yeah, I I can remember. <laughs> no, it is a good question. Because I have heard on many occasions, people say we should not use religion uh, with politics, should not mix up. They are wrong. The Buddha has given this advice. Anujanami bhikkhave rajanam anuattitum. First advice as the followers of the Buddha to cooperate with the existing government or the law enforced by the government. That is the first advice. Second advice, if the ruler of a country punish innocent people, it is not suitable for him to remain as a ruler. He must get out from that. Then he said, if the ruler do not punish the culprit, he is also not suitable to remain. Therefore, the Buddha has pointed out, the culprit must be punished. But in Buddhism, there are no religious punishment. Many other religions, they have religious punishment. In Buddhism, there is no religious punishment. The Buddha's advice is cooperate with the existing government and the law. No separate religious law in, the, in Buddhism. Again, if the people come to know the rulers, or the government are uh, unfair, or taxing. It is their duty to get rid of that kind of politics or political power or the government and organize, establish a good government. Therefore, we cannot say religion should not interfere with politics. Thank you. Next question. <clears throat> Reverend Sir, good evening. I would like to hear your opinion or belief on destiny. Is it true or do you believe that human beings are responsible for their own destiny, as in the saying, destiny is in your hands, or is there a higher superpower that determines who we are or where we are? Thank you. I have very clearly explained, individually, each and every person is responsible for his or her life. Another person cannot handle this life. According to the Buddha, either the Buddha or God or Brahma or Deva or any other supernatural living being, they have nothing to do with this. I am responsible for my life. If I don't like to suffer, I must know it is bad for me to do bad thing, cruel, wicked, harmful thing. If I like to have peaceful, happy, prosperous life, I must know how to cultivate and develop my way of life by doing some service to others. Therefore, another living being has nothing to do with this life. difficult for us to develop this, a spirituality. Spiritual, a spirituality means 
by reducing all the evil forces from the mind, cultivating all the good thoughts, words and actions in the mind, uh, then when the mind is pure, uh, we have cultivated spirituality. In the teachings of the Buddha, he says, the way for you to cultivate your spiritual development to find out the salvation is one way. The method for you to gain worldly material gain and power and authority is another way. These two cannot go together. If you want to develop spiritualism, you have to reduce so much of attachment, craving, anger, jealousy, grudge and ill will, then go on developing. If you are too religious, if you meditate whole day and night, <laughs> you, you never gain anything for worldly development. If you want to experience your pleasure, your worldly gain, your material gain, meditation cannot give you anything. You have to work very hard. Buddha says, Alaso gihi kam bhogi nasadu. Those who like to enjoy worldly pleasure, if they are lazy people, nasadu, no good. <laughs> the Buddha says, Asanyato pabbajito nasadu. The monk or the priest or religious people have no discipline. Nasadu, no good. Raja nasadhu anisammakari. Raja, the ruler, if he is very stubborn, very biased, nasadu, no good to remain as a ruler. Yo pandito kodhano so nasadu. If educated person always show his or her anger, nasadu, no good. <laughs> uh, here the Buddha said, don't be lazy, you must work very hard. He say, uttana sampada, arakha sampada. You must be active, you must work hard. You must know how to protect what you have earned without wasting, without neglecting, because you want to lead a worldly life. But while you are leading a worldly life, you have to face enormous problems and troubles and worries and fears. No one can protect it. But if you work for the spiritual development, uh, then you have to reduce all those evil thoughts from the mind, cultivate all the good thought in the spiritual development. Two lines. Thank you. Uh, Chief Reverend, so I understand we are entitled to three questions. So my third question is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Chief Reverend, you have been talking about the mind uh, and consciousness, but say in the last century, psychologists like uh, Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, they talk about uh, unconscious or the unconscious mind. So you are talking about through meditation we can gain control of our conscious mind. But can meditation also help us to gain control of our unconscious mind, for example? Because today psychologists talk about what happened to our childhood, for example, even before age of reasoning, we will somehow influence our adult life, our behavior and actions. So can meditation also help us to gain control of our unconscious mind, besides the conscious mind. What is the meaning of unconscious? <laughs> what do you mean by unconscious? That is not conscious, a conscious, before consciousness. For Un example, now something happened, a child has been abused, for example. Mm -hmm. So when he grows up to be an adult, this abuse will influences actions and thoughts and behavior. They have nothing to do with unconsciousness. <laughs> Unconscious means 
when the five senses are not working with the mind, when the mind stops thinking, uh, that is unconscious. That means mind exists, but it does not work, unconscious. So when they meditate, they try to do this. Stop all the five senses, stop thinking, then the mind experience, it is unconscious. Mind experience the bliss. The Buddhas and Arahantas who have attained the higher stage, occasionally, purposely, spend for seven days as unconscious, just like dead bodies. There is no difference between dead body and their body while they are in unconscious state. And during this period, they experience bliss because the burdens of physical body is not there. <coughs> the hindrances, obstructions, troubles and problems they are facing because of the body, hunger, thirst, pain, ache, suffering. So when the mind is in that unconscious state, the mind is free from the physical burden. Uh, that is the meaning of unconscious from the Buddhist point of view. Thank you. 9.45, or oh, one final question. Eh? Uh, Reverend, I have this uh, uh, question. Um, from what I, I understand from of most religion, the emphasis is to have to on faith, on belief, and uh, because of that faith, uh, the followers are actually looking for salvation. They are being taught that through faith you can get salvation. Now, from what I heard about the Buddhist teaching so far. Uh, the emphasis seems to be that faith is not important. Uh, what you believe uh, is not important because it is the universal truth and it is the mind that is important rather than the faith. In other words, what you believe uh, does not change anything in the world. That's what you emphasize. emphasize. And all this concept that you have talked about that uh, because we are an ongoing matter, the molecules, uh, the, the elements, everything, this world has no beginning, no end. That's, uh, am, I, uh, am, I, am I right to believe that if that is the case, in the case of Buddhist, the follower of Buddha, uh, Buddha, there is actually no need to even think about salvation. There is no such thing as salvation in your belief. Am I right to say that? It is not necessary to uh, believe or think. By knowing, the more we exist, the more we have to suffer, physically and mentally. Almost every day, complain, pain, trouble, worries, fear, disturbances, while we are living here. So if we don't like to suffer like this, then we must have an aim in our life. What is that aim? To get rid of all these sufferings and problems and troubles that we are facing. Therefore, religion paved the way what to do and what not to do to get rid of this unsatisfactoriness in our life. So the belief has nothing to do with that, only understanding. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, Reverend, before I come to my question, actually, while other religions uh, stress on uh, 
I mean, deepness of faith for salvation. Buddhists simply say that your actions will give you salvation. If you do good, your salvation is already guaranteed. Not your deepness of faith. That's what I understand. Hope I'm right. Before I come to my question, another thing is the long and short of uh, what we have learned today is that if you're clear in your mind, if your understanding is clear, you don't actually need to go into meditation. Am I right? Okay. Thank you. The other thing is... So you... You ask, then you answer your question. <laughs> go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the nod from Reverend Seth, so I, I'm glad I'm right. The, the other thing is, I have in my own concept come up with a difference between a religion and a spiritualism. Maybe I'm wrong. But just to simplify my simple mind and make it easy, spiritualism and religion are the same, except that spiritualism is the belief in God in a supernatural being. But you do it in your own way, spiritualism. Whereas religion, I have discovered, is rather giving a brand name to what you believe in a supernatural power. And therefore, there is a lot of diversiveness. There's a lot of you, me, they, we are different. Whereas if you are spiritual, you have no brain. Therefore, there is only one way. If you believe, you believe. Thank you. Please comment. <laughs> I think your spirituality is a different <laughs> kind of spirituality. <laughs> we use the word spirity. Means Moksha. In Sanskrit, we say Moksha. In Pali, we say Mukha. In English, we say Salvation, Liberation, Deliverance, Freedom. Same meaning. Why every religion use this word, Salvation? That means they admit within this lifetime we are suffering. To get rid of this suffering must follow this religious way of life for our salvation, for our liberation, for our freedom. Ah, that is the purpose of life, that is spiritual Europe. Thank you. It's now 9.50, so it's come, we have come to the end of the Q&A session. So once again, on behalf of everyone, thank you very much, Chief Reverend, for a very beneficial lecture and Q&A session. I'm sure all of us have benefited greatly after hearing Chief Reverend's lecture and responses to the questions fielded. The first leg of Chief Reverend's tour of Sabah has now come to an end. Bhautu sabba mangalang rakhantu sabba devata sabba buddhaan bhavena sadasvati bhantu te Bhautu sabba mangalang rakhantu sabba devata sabba dhammaan bhavena sadasvati bhantu te Bhautu sabba mangalang rakhantu sabba devata sabba sanghaan bhavena Sadasuti Bhavantute Sadhu Sadhu Do you know the meaning of Sadhu? What did you say Sadhu? <laughs> huh? Excellent. Yeah, well done. Well done. Excellent. That means encourage others also to continue when you say Sadhu. Another thing, when we say sadhu, that is the end of that program. <laughs> Understand? Uh, end of the program, only we say sadhu. So.